Honestly, I think it's one of the more criminally underrated watches at its price point. Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch. I'm here today with the Citizen Promaster Skyhawk. This is a watch I've been excited to do a video on, partially because A, I do think it's one of the more compelling values under $500, and B, I was really shocked when I tried to research this before my purchase uh, at the lack of coverage it's received. Uh, early on in my watch collecting, every video that came out talking about affordable watches, you know, under a certain price point included the Nighthawk. And this being kind of the successor to that, I really thought would get a lot of coverage, but there's only a couple videos with beauty shots and maybe a written article or two. So... We're gonna go in a little bit deeper today and take a really close look at it because I do think it's something that if this design speaks to you, you should consider. The case size, uh, very familiar as far as the Nighthawk comparison is gonna be. If you measure just before these crown guards, you're looking at 42.5 millimeters. If you measure including this single crown guard to the opposite side, you're looking at 44 millimeters flat. The thickness is very reasonable at 12.1 millimeters. You have a really nice six millimeter screw down crown. Uh, this is your primary crown. It's gonna help with setting the time. Uh, it has fantastic, if not really aggressive knurling. Uh, it doesn't hurt on your fingers, but there is no shortage of grip. You have a button close to two o'clock. This is going to help you link your watch if by some chance you get it and it is set to the wrong time. Then you have this five millimeter button that is a bit of a signal check. You'll see there's a little range that goes from no to okay. When you're trying to check your signal strength, you push the button, it'll snap and let you know where you're at. Push it again and you're right back to keeping time. On the opposite side of the case, you have another six millimeter crown. This one is not signed. There's no polishing, but it has just as good a grip. Uh, although it is not screw down. This is going to operate the fuel conversion chart that rests around the outside of the dial. Your width from lug tip to lug tip is 47.5 millimeters. That said, if you pull the strap down and measure closer to where the spring bars actually set, you have an effective lug to lug of 46.3 millimeters. This is a 20 millimeter lug width, so strap changes are going to be easy and, and you'll have plenty of options. That said, this was one of the more surprising watch straps that I've ever handled, uh, especially at a watch of this price point. The strap is really nice. It tapers down to about 17.75 millimeters and then jumps back up to 19.6 for the clasp. The clasp itself is pressed metal, uh, but it does have milled hardware. I don't mind that. It allows them to keep a, a thinner profile. Also, I appreciate the incorporation of a single micro adjust. Uh, I didn't have any issues with sizing this watch, but it's always great to be able to just get that perfect fit. The clasp itself works great. A little two button fold over. Uh, it's, I will say it feels a little cheap, a little radly. You can certainly move it around, but when the watch is on wrist, I have had no concerns about this falling off or feeling like it's insecure. It's just something to note when you have it in hand, there is a little bit of play. The leather used though here, while it's padded, is extremely soft. This formed my wrist really quickly. I did kind of work it a little bit just for that initial break in, but everything feels relatively supple. It formed my wrist very, very quickly. And a lot of times with cheaper watches, when you get the padding, it really stiffens it. And I just haven't noticed that with this watch. The case back is relatively boring. Uh, it's sterile with a radial brushing. Around the outer edge, there's some light engraving of general specifications and some identification numbers, but there's really nothing too impressive here outside of the fact that it is a press-on case back and they are still able to achieve 200 meters of water resistance. As we move to the front of the watch, we can see what is, in my opinion, one of the most handsome designs in Citizen's current lineup. In general, I'm kind of tired of the whole yellow loomed or, or Fotina fad that's been going on. I think it's been a little bit played out. But on this watch with the leather strap and the navy blue dial, I think it does work extremely well. The dial also has a really cool balance of feeling simple and legible, but also nice and complicated. 
The inner kind of timekeeping section of the dial has minimal printing with Citizen, the ProMaster logo, EcoDrive, a reminder it's radio controlled and then your water resistance. Date rests at three o'clock and then at nine, you have a little meter that illustrates your signal strength. While this dial is lacking the Nighthawks GMT function, being a radio controlled piece, switching between time zones is extremely easy. When you unscrew the crown, you pull it to the first click and it'll immediately take you to your time zone. As you can see, I'm set to New York City. I live on the east coast of the US, so that's the proper time zone for me. But if you were traveling and wanted to adjust this on the fly, it is one simple click away and it's extremely efficient. So you give up that GMT function, but at the same time, get an upgraded version. If your watch arrives and the time is wrong and you do need to receive signal, what you can do is leave the crown pulled out. There's a little button here at two o'clock. Press that in, hold it for about five seconds, and then the watch will reset and search for signal. It's not something I'm gonna show you now because the hands go all the way through the dial to 12 and then the date wheel tends to go all the way through back around to the proper date and it takes a little bit of time. That said, there are plenty of videos showing kind of the full walkthrough on how to utilize these movements. This to me is just the simplest kind of actual practical use things that you're gonna to need to know. Since I brought up the Nighthawk so much in comparison with this watch, I wanted to do a quick side-by-side -side for you. I think these watches are a perfect balance for each other. The original Nighthawk feels a little bit more contemporary with the white loom while you get a little bit more of the vintage aesthetic with the Skyhawk. But honestly, I think they're different enough that both could have a place in someone's collection. But if I had to pick one, I'd have a really hard time not going with the radio controlled just due to the convenience. While the loom suffers slightly from its yellowing, uh, I think it's completely adequate. It's what you would expect from Citizen with a non-diver. It's better than what you're gonna get on your typical Hamilton, but not as good as what you're gonna get on a Seiko. You'll have several hours of low light visibility, but at the end of the day, it's not making it through till morning. So here we are on my seven and a half to seven and three quarter inch wrist. And I must say this watch wears wonderful right out of the box. I love the strap. While I mentioned there are some pitfalls with that clasp and it does move around just slightly, it feels incredibly secure and it doesn't dig in. Being that pressed metal, it's nice and comfortable with a lower profile. The thickness at 12 millimeters means it doesn't feel overly bulky and being a solar powered watch, there isn't a ton of weight. So while you do get a bit of wrist presence, it doesn't necessarily feel like a bulky watch. If you've ever tried on a Nighthawk, uh, you'll know exactly what this watch is going to feel like on wrist. So let's chat about pricing and where to buy these watches. Because when you go around on a lot of the typical gray market sites, you won't find them. But if you go to eBay, you can pick these up with relative ease around $320 USD. My recommendation, though, would be to go to Amazon. I was able to pick this up for $275. Since then, I've seen the price bounce around between $389 and $270. Just be patient. If you're able to pick this watch up for under $300, I really think it's a steal, as it really is a, a do-everything kind of convenience monster. You don't ever have to set the time because it's radio-controlled. Uh, the date works off perpetual calendar. The water resistance of 200 meters is there. And the sapphire crystal means you don't have to worry every time you bump into a wall. In the market today, I don't know how many watches tick all of those boxes. And Citizen once again shows the extreme value that they can bring to the market. Uh, I love this aesthetic, and especially when comparing it to some of the Hamiltons that I've owned, it really is just a more capable watch. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps in YouTube's algorithm. Also consider subscribing. Uh, I put watch content out weekly at a minimum. And I hope to see you in the next one. What?